And somehow we've already reached the main event. I guess because that first segment took a 40 seconds to 40 minutes. So it took a lot of time there. Sting and Darby Allen versus Absolutely Big for the AEW Tag Team Titles. The Stings are all in attendance tonight. Steve Jr. I forget his other name. Steve Jr., bo both of them, but especially Steve, looked exactly like their father. Well, there was uh, Young Sting working out, exercising, and uh, Young Sting bulking. Yes, that's actually Those true. Those two Stings we had yeah. last night. Yeah. And uh, they're doing they're balling all through the crowd and stuff. And the highlight of the early por portion of this, as Taz pointed out, Bill's mint green Tims that he's out there wrestling in with his blue jeans. <laughs> but no sooner, excuse me, no sooner should Taz point that out than Grandpa Sting appears in the balcony. And I thought, no. But of course he did. Sting, Grandpa Sting dives out of the balcony, 64 years old. Not only that. Let me tell you something about wrestling, everybody. When you're going to do some crazy shit, what you need to do is go up there and do it. Don't think about it. Don't stand there and let your brain go to work. It's the worst thing you can do. Well, this guy got up on that balcony, and these guys weren't ready to catch him yet. And I'm just watching him stand there. And he's standing there. And he's standing there. And he's standing there. I thought, my God, that's a lot of time to be thinking about this jump. <laughs> but the time came, and that fucking guy jumped. And uh, I was just aghast. His retirement match is coming up in not that long. Six weeks? Uh, Four weeks. That. Four weeks, yeah. Christ. Yeah, this guy needs to stay the fuck out of the ring for the next four weeks. Because he does not need to get hurt right here at the last second. There... <laughs> There is the the, the uh, uh, viewpoint of, like, when you're, once you get, like, 100 years old, hey, drink and smoke all you want, you know? <laughs> but he hasn't hit 100. He's not 100. He's 100 on Revolution. That's true. Yes. He's... Once Revolution comes, yes. go fucking crazy, brother. It's the yeah. last one. But don't get hurt before the last one. Yes. Yeah. So we come back from break, and there was a spot that I saw all over online before I watched this show. But when you actually see it, see it, on the TV broadcast, on the big giant screen, it is so much cooler. Big Bill's on the floor. Darby goes for a tope, and Bill catches him, hits a boss man slam. Sounds simple, right? I mean, you got to be big enough to pull this off and have a guy small enough to catch and pull this off. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't say it sounded easy, but it sounds simple. But man, when you see this all blown up on the screen, it is so elegant and graceful and brutal and violent. It was awesome. Darby flies to the air. Bill catches him, and like he doesn't come to a sudden stop. He slows his momentum, but Darby's still going down. And Darby's feet swing under him out the other way. He's still going down. And then Bill pulls him up, 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 all close to seven feet as he is, and then slams him down. It was nuts. Absolutely nuts. He's manhandling Darby more in the ring. I said this earlier about Brian Danielson and Hechicero. I also want Darby, Allen, and Big Bill to have a best of 1,000 series. That will never not be good. So eventually Darby's dead. Sting's fighting back two on one. And uh, Starks even gets the death drop on Sting. Makes a cover, but Darby saves. So Sting and Starks are in the ring fighting. Bill and Darby are outside. Sting, I believe, gets the... Scorpion on uh, Starks. Bill comes in to try and save it. But he's got Darby on his back. And it's the giant with a... Uh, it's the giant like Gollum on his back, essentially. Climbing up the stairs. Getting to the apron. By the last second, Darby unloads on him. And the two of them both fall off the ring through the table. Surprise table bump place goes crazy. And they're both out of the match from that point on. Uh, so, staying in Starks one-on-one. -on -one. Starks escapes the scorpion, and he has Sting set up for the spear. And for the first time, Starks looks reluctant. It's not quite, I'm sorry, I love you, but Sting's a legend. He's the goddamn Stinger. You know Ricky Starks grew up watching this guy. And there's part of him that doesn't want to have to spear him and pin him. But then Sting fires up and beats his chest and howls, and Starks says, well, fuck this. He spears the hell out of him. Sting, of course, kicks out. So Starks tries a second spear, but somehow Sting catches him turns it into the death drop, and the ref counts three, and Sting has won the AEW World Tag Team Championship. 
Someone needs to look up the last time he held a major title. I assume in TNA. It was like 15 years ago. I don't think it was 15, but 10? yeah, he was, he was TNA champion. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That was fun and crazy. And there's a post-match to talk about, too. But just the match itself was really good. Yeah, this uh, this thing they had there at the end. I mean, I did a whole... I did a whole YouTube... It was, it was ended up on YouTube, but it was a whole segment about how maybe Ricky Starks is going to pin Sting. And the argument, obviously, was, well, Sting's probably going to want to put somebody over. And what will, what, will, what will be more of a benefit? If Sting loses his last match to the Young Bucks for the tag team titles, or... If, for example, he puts over a young guy like Ricky Starks because the Young Bucks cost him the match, and then he goes to get revenge on the Young Bucks and beats them in his final match and retires with a win on his on his last show. I thought that, that yes. would be better. Yeah. And it looks like what they're doing is either he beats the Young Bucks and retires as champion, or in his last match he puts over the Young Bucks. And at the end of the day, my point was the Young Bucks don't need to be put over. They don't need to get a win over Sting. You could give that to a Big Bill or a Ricky Starks. So they didn't do that, but they made you think they were going to do that. And that stuff they did there at the end with Ricky, where Sting went for that, this fucking Sting guy. Let me tell you something. That that dive off the balcony was crazy, but he did dive onto a bunch of guys. When he went to do that Stinger splash and Ricky yanked the uh, turnbuckle off, Sting fucking ran so fast and he jumped so high, and his fucking sternal notch went right into that metal fucking buckle so hard. I was like, oh my God, bro, it's fake, dude. Yeah, and that's your bump. You're taking your own bump. God, he hit that so hard, and then Ricky speared him, and the fans, they thought, oh my God, this might be it. But he kicked out. And then he went on to win the titles. I mean, the match was great. I mean, it was great. And Sting's the champion. And then, man, that angle they did afterwards was awesome. So the post-match angle, they bring the Stings into the ring. Sting's kids. Never put on TV before. And they're in the ring celebrating with their, celebrating with their dad. The music is playing. There's black and white confetti shooting through the air. The light show's going on. And then Matthew and Nicholas attack. And everyone's talking about how they were wearing white suits. To uh, emphasize the blood that was coming. But the other part of this is they're feuding with Sting and Darby Allen. Two grown men going through a golf phase, dressed all in black. So of course the Bucks are all out here in, in white, all white, including including white baseball bats. Because Sting uses black baseball bats. So they lay out Darby and Sting. They lay out Sting one and Sting Two. Whatever the hell the kids' names are, these The Sons the, of Sting. The civilians, as they call them. <laughs> the civilians. <laughs> That is funny, but and uh, Darby is the one bleeding everywhere, and he's very careful to rub his face all over the guns, or the the buck suits, and uh, yeah, just great. And uh, they, they, I think, already announced that it'll be the Bucks and Sting and Darby. At least they had the Bucks come out and confront them that one time, but everyone knew that was going to be the match. Now apparently, it's going to be a title match unless Sting drops in the belts between now and then, which they could do. But uh, anyway, yeah, fantastic. It sets up the the real main event of Revolution, whether it goes on last or not. You know, these young bucks re-signed, and then they, like, did a thing or two, and then were just doing nothing. They were doing nothing. And I asked the question, how much are you fucking paying these guys to do nothing? Where are they? And finally, now here we are. This angle felt so hot. Who would have thought? Put the young bucks in a main event angle, a heavy heat angle with Sting and Darby, and it makes this show just feel so major league and i asked the same question where the fuck has Britt baker been she's gone you know what they need they need a big time women's star to show up and light this place on fire and right now it's uh, apparently going to be mercedes but uh there's another one Britt just sitting on the shelf you know i don't know what the hell is going on but at least they got the bucks back and uh you know we got another four weeks of build for this match but man, the Bucks versus Darby and Sting for the tag team titles in Sting's last match is going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute 
Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.